Hi and welcome to the History Crew channel. Please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. As a crew member, you will receive notifications regarding future updates. In this presentation, we will be discussing topic 4 of your syllabus which is civil resistance in South Africa during the 1970s through to the 1980s. This particular video serves as the introduction to the topic. Firstly, what is the definition of civil resistance? Civil resistance is defined as a political action that relies on the use of nonviolent resistance by civil groups to challenge a particular power, force, policy or regime. When people wage civil resistance, they use tactics such as strikes, boycotts, mass protests, and many other nonviolent actions to withdraw their cooperation from an oppressive system. What was apartheid really? The following video insert will give you a brief idea of this oppressive, racist system. So what exactly was the nature of the apartheid state in the 1970s and 1980s? 
As a result of state repression during the 1950s and 1960s there was little protest against the apartheid regime in South Africa during the 1960s. To a certain extent, the brutal apartheid regime through harsh and oppressive legislation was able to eliminate political resistance by banning and arresting the resistance leaders, driving many into exile and other crushing strategies. After the Sharpeville shootings in 1960, the government banned the African National Congress and the Pan-Africanist Congress. The government also increased state control over the media, gave police the power to detain people for indefinite periods without trial, and placed critics under restriction orders or house arrest. The state became increasingly militarized, huge sums were spent on armaments, and all young white men had to do military service. Once again, you must take note that it is because of all this, political resistance began to decline during the late 1960s. The apartheid state continued with its oppressive measures and tactics in order to suppress non-whites in South Africa. In order to control urbanization and the influx of black people into the cities the apartheid regime tried to confine Africans to the homelands called Bantustans through a policy known as separate development. In 1970 all Africans had to become citizens of one of the homelands instead of being accepted as South African citizens. The government tried to promote the idea self-government under homeland chiefs, and a form of independence was given to the Transke, Bofathatswana, Venda and the Siske, although they all still remained totally dependent on the government in Pretoria. Essentially, the homeland system was just a tactic to make Africans believe that they had the opportunity to govern themselves. The homeland system was actually accepted by some traditional African leaders but in general, the homelands were not even recognized internationally. Many Africans of course could not afford to live in the homelands and travel to work in the cities every day. This resulted in many Africans being forced to build and live in squatter camps near the cities, which were deemed illegal by the apartheid government. As a result thereof, raids by the police and army were often conducted into the townships in order to disrupt the lives of African people. Simply put, the homeland system in conjunction with the past system was a strategy to control and disrupt the movement of black people in South Africa. In the following video, President Verwerd tries to explain that apartheid was actually a good political system. This was of course a lie, because apartheid was based on the pseudo-scientific race theories of eugenics and social Darwinism. Now, policy is one which is called by the Afrikaans word apartheid. And I'm afraid that has been misunderstood so often. It could just as easily, and perhaps much better be described, as a policy of good neighborliness. Accepting that there are differences between people. But while these differences exist, and you have to acknowledge them, at the same time, you can live together, aid one another, but that it can best be done when you act as good neighbors always do. After they were banned in 1960, the ANC and PAC established armed wings to continue resistance underground from within the country. This decision was not taken easily, but all peaceful methods to negotiate with the apartheid government was met with more violence and oppression on the part of the government. The time had come to meet force with force. Through their armed wings they planned to fight a guerrilla war in order to overthrow the government. But the leaders of Umkonto we Siswe were arrested and sentenced to life imprisonment after the Ravonia trial in 1964. Plans by Paco, the armed wing of the PAC, also came to nothing when their leaders were arrested and imprisoned. After the banning of the ANC and PAC, these organizations sent some of their leaders out of the country to set up headquarters in exile in order to continue the fight against apartheid, but from outside the country. Oliver Tambo led the ANC in exile from its headquarters in Lusaka in Zambia and the PAC established a base first in Lesotho and then in Tanzania. The ANC in exile set up structures which consisted of the National Executive Committee. The NEC was then in overall control of ANC and MK operations. The apartheid government also faced resistance from the political leaders who were imprisoned on Robben Island. These were the Ravonia trialists who were sentenced to life in prison in 1963 such as Mandela, Kathrada and Walter Sisulu. The prisoners did not just give up once they were sent to the island, but instead organized themselves and established a political structure known as the High Organ which would coordinate secret planning and resistance on the island. 
they educated themselves in secret and maintained their commitment to the struggle against apartheid. In conclusion the main point to take note though, would be the fact there was now a vacuum or gap in South Africa. There was a lack of real leadership within the country and resistance against the apartheid regime was declining. The fire within many people was very weak and they began to feel that the apartheid regime could never be defeated. Something would be needed to reignite the fire. That spark would come and from one little flame it would spread into a raging fire that burnt so hot. Thank you for watching this video and please remember to subscribe to the History Crew channel.